I have a client that struggles with any kind of shoulder pain, 99.9% of the time it is coming from either immobility and a lack of flexibility in particular areas or a lack of shoulder stability. So if you find yourself in that group of individuals who suffers from shoulder pain, it's time to look at your stability and your flexibility. Hi, hello, welcome back to some shoulder stability today. If you are new here, welcome. My name is Alexi. On my channel, I like to teach you how to live a happier and healthier lifestyle. And today we are going to be living happier and healthier with some shoulder stability. I am personally someone who has suffered from some shoulder issues and these are just a few moves that I do and I have my clients do to help just create some more overall stability in the shoulder since this is something that's going to be very important if you choose to do any type of lifting. A lot of the times if we don't have shoulder stability we will find that it ultimately leads to some sort of pain at some point in time. You need stability with your strength. So we're working on some shoulder stability today. If I look familiar that means you watched last week's video so thank you very much. Today is shoulder stability. Last week how to get a deeper squat. If you like these types of movement type of videos, don't forget to smash the thumbs up button and let me know in the comments down below if you have anything in particular that you want to see. Like I always say, this is not a one size fits all lifestyle by any means. Find the moves that you enjoy, that feel best, and that work for you. Sometimes this is going to be trial and error, especially if you're learning how to navigate this on your own and you don't have a coach to offer you any kind of guidance. Remember, we wanna feel comfortable. There should be no pain or unnecessary tension in anything that we're ever doing. And if there is, then we need to pause and kind of check in and evaluate what's happening. I'm gonna give you a few different ways and options and types of equipment that you can use with just your body weight, with the resistance band, and I'm gonna show with the TRX as well because TRX or suspension trainer is one of my personal favorites to use for myself and my clients in order to do some good shoulder stability moves. Okay, hello, welcome to exercise number one. We are going to be doing some hanging scapular retraction. So you will need a bar for this or something to hold yourself onto. So if you have access to a gym or a pull-up bar like this, then this is something that's really easy to do. I like to do this also as a way to, I like to do all of these as a way to prep and prime my shoulders as well. So not only working on them individually or specifically to work on strengthening my stability, but also using them as a way to kind of activate the shoulder and remind myself what it needs to be doing in my movement. So I will also use some of these movements as movements to help prep and prime me for whatever I'm doing that day. When I say prep and prime, I mean warm up. I'm essentially warming myself up, prepping myself, and priming myself for whatever it is that I'm going to be doing that day. And again, you can use these dependent upon you. If you have a really hard time, stabilizing those shoulder blades in your bench press, try something like this to warm up, then go into the bench press and see if you overall just even have a better connection with the shoulders and feel more stable in the movement in that moment. Try it. Okay, so without rambling too much, we're doing a hanging scapular retraction. So I am going to be hanging on the bar here. I like to always start by just raising the hands above the head here so you can get a good idea as to what I'm going to be doing once I'm on the bar. So if I raise the hands above my head here in this V wall slide, if you know, you know, I want to be able to pull the arms down without moving my elbows or physically moving my arms down this way. So if I bring my shoulders into this shrugged position, I want to be able to pull the shoulder blades down without moving my arms at all. Well, I'm moving my arms, but notice how I am not bending at the elbow joint here or bending or moving at the shoulder joint either. So if you're looking from the back, my shoulder blades are high by my ears here in the shrug position and now my shoulder blades are down. So what we are working on is trying to pull the shoulder blades down. We're thinking about taking that shoulder blade and sliding it down into our back pocket. I like to do these for a couple second count hold and I'll do it in a repetition fashion. We're gonna do three reps of five seconds. I would recommend finding a grip that's just slightly outside the shoulders. So I'm gonna hang. And I'm going to pull the shoulder blades down and hold for five, four, three, two, one, relax. 
nice and slow and controlled. And then again, pull myself up. Five, four, three, two, one. Nice and slow, relax. One more. Five, four, three, two, one. Relax. Whew. Yes, and that is the hanging scapular retraction. You can do them for as many repetitions or for as long of a hold as you can hold. You can also do this on a lat pull down machine. So if you are not able to pull your body weight up yet, you just hold the lat pull down machine and you pull the lat pull down bar down. So that would be a modification if you could not pull your body weight up. You can also do this on a resistance band like an assisted pull up if you wanted to if you could not do it on a lat pull down machine. Next I have my handy dandy TRX. If you have access to a TRX I think it's great for a lot of different types of stability moves but I'm just going to show you one type of fly on the TRX. There's a slew of different types of flies that you could do. I'm going to be doing a rear delt fly and I'm going to be doing a T fly. So my arms will be out here at the sides of my shoulders like a capital T. We want to make sure that the shoulder blades aren't coming up and that we're in this shrugged position. If you feel it in your traps, it's usually an indication that you're in this shrugged position. So just remember to pull the shoulder blades down, slide that shoulder blade into the back pocket and try to keep them there the entire time. One of my favorite things about the TRX is that you control the intensity. So if the movement starts to get too challenging or you can't keep those shoulder blades set, then all you gotta do is walk the feet back a little bit and it makes the movement feel slightly easier. I am grabbing the handles in a neutral position so my wrists are not twisted in any which way and my palms are facing in towards one another. With the TRX or any suspension trainer, you always wanna remember the closer your feet are to where it's anchored, the more challenging it's going to be. So you can control the intensity here by just walking those feet out until you're in a comfortable position. I'm going to start here. When I'm ready, shoulder blades are set. So I'm not here in this shrugged position, palms facing in, arms nice and straight. And when I'm ready, I'm gonna keep myself in this nice solid plank position. My hips won't be sagging. I'm going to pull the handles out to the sides of my shoulders like a nice big capital T. When I'm here at the top of the movement, I don't wanna let that tension go. So I don't want slack in these straps. I'm working on constantly pulling the handles as hard as I can away from one another to keep tension in the straps. Once I'm here at the top of the movement, I'm gonna keep that tension and slowly lower myself all the way back down to the ground. I don't want gravity to do the work. So I don't wanna pull myself up here to the top position and then just flop down. So I'm trying to keep control the entire time on the whole way up not overextending. I don't want to overextend here. If your hands are slightly in front of your shoulders, that's totally okay as well. Meet yourself with where you're at. If the elbows start to break and bend, then that is usually an indication that the movement is becoming a little bit too challenging. So you just walk those feet out. Your arms should always be nice and straight the entire time. I'm going to do like three so you can see three in a row. My feet are sliding. Also want to make sure the wrists aren't bent and I've got a nice neutral rest the entire time. That is personally like my favorite thing in the world. I got a lot of favorite things. When you're doing something like this too, or anything in general, I would really pay attention. Is one side harder than the other? Are you able to keep both those shoulders engaged the entire time? Does one fatigue more quickly than the other? Pay attention and just constantly be checking with your body, doing the body scan to see and ask yourself what's going on. Remember, no failure only feedback and we're just trying to collect all of this feedback to help us navigate and tell us what to do next. Next one is a super band pull
pull apart. All you need is a resistance band. If your resistance band is not a circle and it's just a straight line, you can use that here as well. That's totally fine. I'm actually only going to use one side of the resistance band. So this is very similar to your TRX rear delt fly. You want to think of these in unison together if you've practiced one and you feel comfortable in one. So here I'm holding the resistance band in front of the body and my palms are facing down. Same concept here, my arms are nice and straight in line with the shoulders and I'm not too far in this shrugged position. My shoulder blades are pulled down into that nice retracted position. The closer your hands are, the more challenging it's going to be. The further the hands are, the easier it's going to be. So find a place that allows you to keep your form. When form breaks, you either need to make it easier or stop the set. You don't want to be practicing repetitions with bad form. It kind of is counterproductive at that point. Once my shoulders are set, arms are straight, I'm going to pull the resistance band as far as I can. Maybe I can get here to my chest, just like the TRX. I don't want to go past this point. I want to stop right there at my shoulders. I want to keep those shoulders set and then I'm slowly letting those arms come back to my starting position. Again, we don't want gravity doing the work. I don't want to do this. I don't want no tension here in the band. I want to keep that constant tension on the band through every repetition. Same thing as the TRX. When you notice that the shoulders start to raise here or the arms start to bend, then it might be a little bit too challenging. I'll show you what it looks like from behind just so you can see the shoulders in action. Oh, that was a little challenging. So I'm gonna loosen my grip so I get slightly easier. What I don't want happening is this. I don't want this. I want those shoulder blades pulled down. When you're doing these two moves, you might feel it in these rear delts a little bit. That's a good place to feel it. I would focus on that tension being there. If you're feeling it in your neck, you're feeling it in the traps, that's almost always an indication that you're in this shrugged position. So just make sure you pull those shoulder blades down into the nice retracted position. Lastly, we have child's pose, which if this is not your first time here, you've been familiar with me talking about child's pose before, but we're going to be doing child's pose and similar to the 90-90, instead of lifting the foot up in this instance, we're gonna work on lifting the hands up. So I can do my child's pose two different ways. I can do my child's pose with my palms down, and with my palms up, the main difference being that when your palms are up, you're placing a larger stretch on the lats. I recommend that you do child's pose in both positions and you work on this in both positions. So sinking back down into child's pose, hang out for a little bit, rock side to side, and then from here, again, without allowing that shoulder to raise up by the ear, I am working on picking the arm off or the hand off the ground. And then again on the left side, noticing if there are any imbalances in one side over the other. So what we don't want is this reaching forward or reaching forward and then up. And then we're going to palms up. Whoo, what always gets me working on the same thing, picking those hands up off of the floor, also without breaking at the elbows, trying to keep the arms really nice and straight. Same thing here, just paying attention, seeing if you feel any differences or imbalances between the two sides. Now you have a bunch of moves with different equipment to try to increase your shoulder stability. If you try any of these moves, let me know which you prefer or you enjoy doing the most or what works most and best for you. Don't forget to smash the thumbs up button. Let me know what you wanna see next in the comments down below. Thank you so much for watching and until next week, I'll see you on Monday, bye. You stole my heart of God